Hello guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and today we're going to talk about finite state machines and the implementation that I use for my game Best of Blitz, which he can, by the way, wish it is in his team. It's coming soon. Next year. Uh, so the goal for today is for us to quickly define what a finite state machine is. I'm not going to spend too much, too much time on this because there are already plenty of videos on YouTube and on the internet that you can, you can find probably better uh, explanation of mine. Then we're going to go into a very high level example of a unity, of unity, sorry, of a enemy state machine, what that could look like. And then I'm going to show you guys my implementation of a node based state machine, which is we're going to go deep into the code. Although you, go, you guys are going to see that this is actually quite simple, it's not that much code. Then I'm going to show you guys a quick example of this state machine. Uh, working and how you can implement yourself. You can see here that my little square is changing states every amount of time or something. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to use it in my game. I'm using for my enemies so far. And but at the end of the video, you guys are going to see, uh, I'm going to share with you guys uh, the link to my GitHub uh, repo where I open sourced all the code, not to the game, of course, but I did open source code to uh to define financing machine itself so let's uh let's 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 get started what is a state machine right so a state machine basically allows an object to alter its behavior when its internal state changes and basically the object appears to change uh class you definitely seen the state machine uh either in games or even in real life you maybe a really really good example of a state machine is a a semaphore or a semaphore or a, a traffic light right so it changes state from green to yellow to red i believe that that's a common thing around the world and green and it stays a certain amount of time on green and it stays a certain amount of time on yellow a certain amount of time on, on red depending on the country you can have sensors also in affecting if there's too much traffic it's going to spend more time on one more time on that's that's a state machine right and the state machine is composed of three pieces at least my understanding of it, right one is the finite state machine itself which is the brain right is responsible for managing the current state and the transitions that's all of this right? and you're going to see that in the code um, the second one is state itself the state is an entity it's a class right it's a definition it represents states so it's basically what are you doing right um, and the third part is a transition right? it's in transitions is it defines when and where you want to move for example taking the traffic light again you have green that and then you have some sort of timer or some sort of external sensor based on traffic or not and that's gonna tell you hey it's time to move move where right so from green you're going to go to yellow and then it's going to say stay like whatever like 10 seconds on yellow and then it's going to go from uh after 10 seconds it's when and where it's going to go to red and red is the same thing as like, uh, the cycle repeats itself right so this is basically the three parts of state machine it's that's it guys that there's nothing more right um all right so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is a high level example and for this i chose this guy right so this is this is what an enemy ai could look like right uh, i hope you guys can see this well so you have here an enemy ai and you could have you have three states which is wonder this, this for example could be your initial state right and then you have a state called chase and then you have a state called that. so you have three states you have three things that your enemy could be doing right and and then you have transitions right so from wonder to uh to chase when uh when player is visible so if you're wondering if the enemy is wondering if player is visible then it's going to move to where chase right and chase it's going to stay on chase until player is either not visible then it's gonna go back to wonder or player is nearby so you could have some sort of condition that says hey this is last five meters or whatever units. Then it goes into attack. 
And then player, and then the same thing here. You, here you have another transition to go back to chase. Player is visible but not nearby. And then it goes back to chase. So then it goes back to chase. And if you're on attack and player all of a sudden is not visible again, let's say the player ran, ran after a wall or something, then it goes back to one. So here are your transitions, right? Here are your states. And behind all that, you would have a state. So that's that's a high level example. So let's now go deep into the code and show you my implementation of the node based state machine that I created for my uh, best of uh, game. All right, so let's here. And like I said, uh, my, my screen is not too big today because I'm using my laptop, but the state machine, all our implementation is all. And if you look at the finite state machine, which, like I said, it's the brain, right? Um, finite state machine is this guy. So you have an initial state defined in here, right? And by the way, I did add this just so whenever we add the nodes to the symmetry, you have custom um, icons. Otherwise, you'd have that gray ball, which don't need this I mean, you have the initial state here which basically defines what state your state machine will start on right and all this is very well commented so if you guys get access to this, if you guys get access to this code you guys will see it. uh on ready on my state machine um yes uh, if the initial state is defined it changes the state right uh on process it checks there is a current state it calls in the date method on the state right so we're so the state machine is only going to be executing one state at a time right so you see you can you can see that we will never have anything on process inside the state so it's going to be update physics update which is equivalent to the process and the physics process the same here you can see that the same thing that happens here and then the change state, all it does is that when somebody calls this guy, I'm going to check the current state, it's actually state, which should be, and if it's, it's going to exit this guy, and then it's going to take the new state, it's going to enter state, which um, we'll go into what this is in a minute, and then it's going to define the current state as the new state, which is this guy, which says here, that's what I'm doing. And this is defined, this is our entire brain, which is what, four, methods it's not um all right next guy is the state itself right the the parent implementation of the state is is, is this right so first we have a reference to our finite state machine every state is always a child of finite state machine we can just get we can just get parent and here we have a spotted variable for a check transition interval, right? Which basically is the interval that the transitions under this state are going to, going to be checked. Uh, the deploy is one second, but you can do, uh, you can decrease or increase that as, as you want per state, the deploy is one. Here you have all the transitions that are under this state. So basically, right? So if we go back to our quick, Drawing here, so for example, wonder would have one transition here and one transition here. Each one of these guys would have two transitions under its belt, right? Cool. So, and then the check transition. Uh, here on ready, uh, basically, I add all the children from this guy, which should be all transitions, and it actually checks if it's adds to her transition array. Uh, process, I'm actually there. Uh, the enter state is the method that is called when you enter the state, and that's defined in the readme in the local source group. Access state is the opposite, so it's called whenever you move into another state. So you 
can do uh, setting up and exiting and, and closing things here, whatever you need to do. Uh, update is called on every frame, right? And here, what we also do is that we have a little timer logic here to check the transitions, right? Uh, physics update is also called on every physics frame and the check transitions, it basically goes through our transition checks if the condition is true, which we'll go into that. And if it is, it calls the chain state from our parent finite state machine and to the target state of the transition. And if we go into the transition now, right, the transition is the one class, uh, it's one class that you never have, you don't need to change unless you want to extend it and make it your own if you want to be my guest. Um, but basically here we have some definitions and I'm going to show you guys what this means in a minute. We have a reference to the parent state, right? And here, um, I think it's easier if I just show you here. So here we have an idle state and angry state. And from the idle state, I'm going to move to, to angry, right? And in here, I have a target state. So I'm too angry, I have a variable name, which is on which is the timer. I have an operator which can be less than equal to more than so basically it's used to compare the variable names against something the ver value type for now the only ones that are uh, supported are boolean integers and float uh, i plan to add more in the future and the value that i'm comparing against right so basically this variable name it needs to be an exact match to a variable in my parent state right so if i go to my idle state i have a variable here called time so basically on every check transition i'm checking if my if my variable timer is more than one and if it is i return true if i return true i change states and that's it yeah that's the entire implementation of the this same machine, which you guys don't need to code this again because this is first one. Uh, first of all, this is open source, and second of all, this is already coded in here and it's very well commented as well as documented in README. But of course, feel free to extend it as you feel like you want to, right? So, this is my implementation of a code based state machine. Uh, yeah. So quick example right so let's do a quick example of this i'm actually going to do the same thing that we have it in here and if you look at this if i run this code right now you see that i'm changing states every second right and um so let's do that again right so i have a color right here let's let's create another one all right i think this is the easiest way to have this other guy here um, entity 2 right and the first thing you need to do to use this system after you copy this files into your project of course is that you need to add a child node and you're gonna work finite state machine and there you go you have a finite state machine and you need to add a finite state machine as a child of the the entity or enemy or whatever you want to, to control uh, as a child of that. Right? For example, in my kitchen management game, I have a state machine that cons controls my stove, right? So if there's something on the stove, the stove turns on, and after some time, it changes into like burn mode and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so here I added, uh, created a finite state machine. So now I need states, right? Um, what I will do here, right? Uh, and for sake of organ organizations, I like to create a, a states folder, but you don't need to you do whatever you want. I just create another state here. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna create a new script. You're gonna inherit from state, right? Uh, let's just call this new idle state, right? And in the new idle state, first thing you need to do is that you need to just define this 
title. Say, why do you need to define a class name? Because you need to, you need to at one point, I'm going to do that now, but you need to add this node. You need to add this as a child. Here, in the, in the after you add at least one statement, you need to go to the finite signature and choose the initial state, right? And the current state you don't need, it says here, runtime, right? So if I run this now, uh, nothing's gonna happen, right? So this guy is gonna keep changing its state independently, as you can see, and this guy is just Y. So, right? So what the implementation of the state itself is basically whatever you want. And the good thing about this system, at least in my opinion, because I see a lot of people creating finite state machines with enums and a lot of the code in the same file, even if it's a small system, and that's fine and it works and there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to keep things separate, right? So the way this system works is that you have the, the implementation, entire implementation of each state, no matter how small or big, in its own file, right? So for example, um, I want to control the state of my entity, right? So the first thing I'm going to do here, is usually what I do is that I just define a sport variable actor, right? And of the type that I, of my parent. So if it's an enemy, you can define this as an enemy. If you have an enemy class or something, right? So if I do this, right? So now if I go here, I can just pick my enemy. And now what this allows me to do is that I'm just going to override my uh, enter state in here, right? So in my enter state, I'm just going to say that my actor dot color is going to change to color dot choose a this guy blue by the blue. So now. There you go, my initial state is violet blue. The thing is that this doesn't have a transition and this is not moving to anything else, right? So, and the um, the good thing about the system is that you saw that I was able to create a new state by just extending from state and I did a small implementation here, correct? The good thing is that my other guy here already has a, an anger state. I don't need to recreate the same state for every uh, for every entity that I have. So what I can do here now is that I can just come here to finite state machine and just add my angry angry state in here, right? And I'm, I just I can just leave it with this name. It doesn't matter the name here. It doesn't matter. And the actor here, I'm just gonna choose entity two. Right? You can see here that the actor for this one is entity, the actor for this one is entity too. And the good thing is that they work entirely independently because these states are being controlled by this brain and these other states are being controlled by this brain. Right? And if I run this again, nothing's going to happen to our second square except going into the initial state. Why? Because we do not have any transitions. Right? So in order to have a transition, um, what we're going to do here is that we're gonna we're gonna add a new node as a child of the state that we want. Transition, right? I like to call my transitions, for example, to angry. Means that this transition is gonna transition to angry. On our transition, I'm gonna define a target state. Which this guy's gonna go to angry. Uh, and variable name. Like I said, this needs to be a variable inside our parent state. Right? So what I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to define timer float zero. Uh, in my enter state, I'm also just going to make sure this guy is zero. And I'm going to override now my update. Right? And just like I have it in here. Right, I'm just gonna copy this code here because it's um, I'm gonna override my update method. I'm gonna call super just to make sure I keep checking the, the, the transitions. And now I'm just gonna increase my timer uh, on the delta. I don't need to do all that timer check here in my update. Why? 
because whenever these um, whenever the transition is the condition is true I'm just gonna move to another state and if I go back to this one uh, I'm, I'm resetting my variables in here state, so that so I don't need to worry about it, right so the only thing I need to do now is that on my timer on, on my transition I just variable name timer if it's more than is of type flow more than let's say one right? and if it's more than one I'm gonna move to my angry state right and my angry state is already defined in here what's gonna happen it's gonna change to dark red let's see if this works there you go it moved into uh, it now but this the the thing is that this guy is, is still in my angry state because I don't have any other transitions out of my angry state so let's add that now all right so in order to make the angry state go back all we need to do here is just add, add child add a transition here I'm just gonna say to idle right in here our angry state also has a variable just gonna add a timer here right we're gonna say more than say one for example uh, and the target say here is our new idle state right and if we save this now if we run you can see that they're both gonna change states so angry is coming back it's going to be angry again coming back so this 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 is it guys this is our entire state machine this is all you need to worry. So you need to add a finite state machine node, create an uh, add an initial state, uh, extend from state so you can have your own implementations of each state. Here, add a transition with the conditions, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Um, moving on. So here and now, I'm just going to quickly show you guys uh, how I use this on my best blitz game. Um, let's see, right? So my best of blitz game, uh, I have an enemy, right? And it just as you guys saw it in there, I have my finite state machine here, which my initial state is follow actor. And in my follow actor, I have base movement logic in here. That's all it has in here. On my entry state, I have a nav agent. I, I'm connecting to signal uh, this is all movement logic and nothing more right and then i have a transition to attack so it's going to enemy attack state on distance to player which is defined on follow actor here so on this is player if it's less than five then i move to attack attack I have an attack I also have a little bit of movement but I have in my update which is not a physics update I have my attack logic here right so if I have an active weapon blah 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 I, I call attack which is which is a topic for me. and again if my distance player is more than five I go back to follow and the good thing is that the, uh, all the logic for attacking is in one class all the logic for following movement is in another class and um and i have all my variables in here my movement speed for attack my movement speed regularly the check transition interval uh the my attack rate rate my weapons manager and everything is in here right and uh, my computer is a bit slow today but let's see if we can quickly run this Right here, you go here. It's a little bit of my game working. You can see my player. You can see that I have these guys. They're following me. These guys don't really have weapons at this level, but you can maybe see that they slow down when they get close to me, and when I'm further away, they're a bit faster. And that's all the state machine that you guys saw working. So that's it for my implementation on state machine on, on Bastard Blitz. It is for now, and now I'm just gonna. Uh, quickly show you guys the github which you guys can find it find the link in the description also of course uh, it's called fsm godot it's on my own github everything's open source um, 
I try to create as a detail of a reading as I can. Of course, if you can't, if you need anything, if you have any questions, feel free to send me questions on the comments. Uh, also, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe because I need the subscription to keep the channel going. And I hope you guys saw like this. I hope you guys can use this, and I'll see you next time.